Okay, hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Munigetti. I teach uh, sixth grade science in San Diego School of Lafayette. And I do a lot of this stuff in my classroom to get kids. So this first thing, I'm going to explain this now and come back to it. Occasionally, my father okay. seems to overheat and they stop working. So I'll probably come back to it. Anyway, all this is a big box with a hole cut out of it. Uh, home seat, and there's a bungee cord inside that connects to the fabric in the back. So when I yeah. this, hey, you have to jump. simply decrease the volume of the box. When I let go, I'm decreasing the volume of the box rapidly and it pushes the air out. Now, when that happens, the air comes out of the center of the hole faster than it does around the edge. So the air sort of drags. That creates a pressure difference. And then it helps the air on the edge to spin backwards. And that's a piece of pressure that can help you. You can do exactly the same thing if you get a small garbage can, cut a hole out of the bottom, put a shower curtain on the end, and tap it. You're just changing the volume of the bottom. It does exactly the same thing. Okay, so this is, and these will go 40 to 50 feet and hold together. So I do presentations in schools. These will go all the way across the multi use zone. They're pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, I've got a couple of things where I'm going to have some volunteers come up. So, it's really actually some volunteers. Okay, first one. And this is going to take you in. What I have here is just two pieces of pipe with a valve between them. And when the valve is parallel to the pipe, air can pass through. When the valve is perpendicular to the pipe, air can't pass through. So if I take the large balloon and I put the large balloon on one end, if I take the small balloon, the little balloon, I'm going to blow it up this much. So the question is, what's going to happen when I open the valve? Any idea? What's going to happen when I open the valve? Say it again. Okay, so now do it again. Okay, she said the big one is there is going to go into the little bit. So you think they're going to even out? Okay. So, she thought they would even out. Any different idea? You think it's going to go this way? Sorry. Okay. What you want is called uh, this one and call up this one. Any different idea? How many things? Yes. Yeah. No change. Okay. So we've got air coming out of this one and even the blue stuff. Camera live. We've got air coming out of this one and filling up this one, but we've got no change. Any other idea? This will work with your camera. Yes. Where two virtual Oh, nice. Guys, let me Okay, now. Yes. Now, it's interesting. When I do this with uh, schools, smaller children want the air to go back and forth. They like the motion. They want to go to fill this one, and then this one's going to fill this one. Yeah, we're going to fill That's what small children want to do. So, based on the three alternatives you've heard, uh, how many do you think the air will fill with this one and they'll leave it out? How many do you think there's going to be no change? And that word app. How many think the air in this one's going to fill this one? How many think it's something that has not been mentioned yet? There's some wise people, maybe. Hey, watch. Hey, now, if you think about it, it makes sense. When is it hardest to blow up the balloon? At the very beginning. This one wants to go back to its original shape more than this one does. I can do this all day, and I can't fill up this balloon. This one wants to, this one has lost its tension. The tension of this balloon is stronger. So it wants to get back. And this is just science can be found at Home Depot. Howdy. Okay. Are you guys managing your stage? No, we're just. Oh, okay. 
one of these guys is in charge. Okay, now, this one I'm going to need some volunteers. Watch. The goal. Oh, that's an idea. That's so stupid. I can't find that. Yeah. The goal is to knock the ring out of the way and have the small pipe fall into the clear pipe. Okay, now think about it. The goal is to knock this ring out of the way in such a way that you can't, like can't hit this one. You've got to hit it in this direction. Maybe you have to. You cannot help us. Okay, anybody like this side? Okay, hey, don't step too hard because we're bouncing. Give it a shot. Okay, just try. Okay, thank you. Over time, though, it's a little out of shape. I've never had trouble finding Got it. Very good. Have you seen this before? No. I mean, like the. Oh, you learned it in science class. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Okay, now, first time I saw this. Oh, you know what? Since somebody solved it already. First time I saw this one, I was thinking, well, you have to hit it really hard. And move it out of the back. Oh, oh, sorry, not that. Uh, but think about it. When you hit the outside, this is a hoop. What happens when you hit the outside? is it compresses the shape. That generates more friction between the small pipe and the top of the hoop. So I'm thinking, well, now maybe if I hit down and out, squeeze the hoop down and push it out. It worked once. But when you hit the inside of the hoop, you're flattening the hoop out. And that pulls this surface away from the top too. Got it? And then there's no friction at all between the hoop and the small pipe. So when I do this with my classroom, probably you teach you this with your is I do it on a smaller scale. And I sort of give them the illusion that I'm hitting it here, and I barely miss the outside, and I hit the inside. And they they can't see it. And they come up with this and I don't think they can hit the inside. Okay? See, now this one's quick, don't pay to look. Looks like the blue one is smaller than the yellow one. Really? Looks like the blue one is smaller than the yellow one. Oh. They're actually exactly the same size. Now, this is one of those things in science. Even though you know it, even though you know they're exactly the same size, your brain automatically compares the bottom of the blue one to the top of the yellow one. Automatically. Even though you know it. It's, it's creepy. Even though you know your brain automatically compares the surface of the top one, the bottom surface of the top one, and the bottom surface of the blue one, the top surface of the blue one. When it's back in the same place. And to make these, it's just a circle. You cut out two different radii as an arc. And you're back in the Okay, here is another example of science and home depot. Home depot sells these aluminum rods. Uh, I think. I think like $10 per day. Now, what? Oh, this is where you need that glass. Do you actually need that? Do you do the car? Yeah. If I tap the sort of... Um, no, no, I'm doing like the vibration of doing this. So now, uh, you go back to the hangout. Hang out. This will get really loud. If I tap it this way, the vibration is black and stuff in there. So what? If I coat my finger with rosin, the kind of stuff that violin players coat with rosin, and I stroke it, 
I'm actually causing my fingers to stick and release and stick and release and I'm making the vibration of the lift. And it's considerably louder. And so they obviously modified the sound a little bit to get some of the sound from covers. When I do this for you know, science assembly, kids go nuts. Oh my god, that's the sound from covers. Okay, now. Next one. This is the chat. This so, is the um, text. So you bring some flowers to your wife or your significant other. And you bring some, which is considered to be a really great flower. But they're the wrong color. They want it red or pink or something. So you can take care of that. And then they change their mind. No, we really want it white. And they go back to that. And then they change their mind again. But then they change the Okay, hey, these are and then science is that Michael Top. These are the silk carnations themselves. And then I spray a chemical called indophenol on it. It dries. And when you spray it with ammonia, the indophenol comes pink. But when I wave it around in the air, it's mixing with the carbon dioxide in the air, and then neutralizes it comes back to clear. And I can do this over and over again. Pretty cool stuff. Now, it looks like I'm still working my phone. Now, sometimes if the air is moving around too much, okay, here's what's happening. Just a blower. 
Here's the list of gloves. And when the air moves around the outside of the sphere, the air is moving really fast around the outside of the sphere. Air pressure all around holds it in place. This is called the Bernoulli sphere. And, and if the next successive balloon is larger, it picks up the other air that's going around. I actually saw this on David Levin. They have kids scientists on David Levin. Um, and this one will... Uh, Okay. And so if the original one is smaller, the air will go around it. The air turns on the outside holding it in place. That air moves around the next one. The air turns on the outside. So you can actually, if it's just slightly bigger, I might get there. Okay. It's kind of hypnotic. It's kind of watching. And for the balloons, everybody, you'll notice there's a metal box in it that gives a little bit of mass, gives a little bit of weight to hold it in place. Um, without the washer, it would blow all over it. The washer gives it enough mass and the ability to put it in place. Now, if any of you have uh, taken a college physics class, you may have come across this. Uh, this is called complex jump and range. And the way it works, I've got, I hope they don't blow this up. I've got 110 volts going through the coils wire down here. And this is a magnet wire. And the steel rod in the pipe is passed all the way down to the bottom. When I pass electricity through this, it generates a very strong magnetic field. That magnetic field then produces electricity in the steel rod put inside, which produces its own magnetic field. And the magnetic field that produces it, I'm sorry, you know, when the ring is on top, it produces a magnetic field in the ring. It just so happens that the magnetic field is similar to cold pays each other. When I pump the current, it comes off. Okay? So, let's just see like the coil wire produces a very strong magnetic field. That magnetic field then produces electricity to the to this, which generates its own magnetic field. And the magnetic field cold pays each other. So, and this is a little bit. If I go smaller, a little higher, a little less mass. Now, it's also a, a concept of electricity. If you cool things down dramatically, electricity will pass through easier. There isn't as much resistance. So, this side, not that high. So I've got some of those rings sitting in my eye. Quite a bit higher. So the electricity actually passes through this faster. It's going to cool off and make that Now they cool off really fast. And that's simply because these are cold and the electricity passes through faster. It's going to reach a stronger magnetic field, so the poles oppose each other faster. Okay. Now, if I have a ring that has a slot in it, nothing happens. The circuit isn't complete. The electricity passes through here, the magnetic field passes through here, and it generates electricity in this one. It can't because it's not a complete circuit. Okay, then, last one. Kind of similar to the one before.
In here is universal indicator. So when I drop dry ice in it, I'm introducing carbonic acid into the system, and it changes color. And so it goes through that. And I'm colorblind, so I'm not sure. I know this is kind of blue to yellow. But it goes from like purple to like green. And so it goes to universal indicators of chemical substance. As the pH changes, it indicates that by changing color. Okay? The light is just to make it look cool. And all this says is, is PVC pipe. He's, hold on, he's about to plug it in. I want to make light, sure it wasn't. Spotlight on the inside, and it is vented on the other side. So the heat doesn't build up too much. And the spotlight is just on this. This is just plastic from cap plastic. It's, I dropped it on the leaf. Anyway, good. I'm keeping my eye on the time. Last time I was here last, last year, It's amazing how long they hold together. And everybody wants to touch them. <laughs> Even the adults. <laughs> Pardon me? The band, uh, it, it has to do with the size of the circle. Um, I... I've actually tried this with squares, but it automatically goes back to a circle. Circle being the perfect shape and the pressure equalizes. Okay, camera's out. <laughs> so that was a good that's a good fifty feet. And they sort of undulate. If I can sort of uh, aim it under the lights, it becomes it's visible longer. These <laughs> machines are working well today. They're not getting too hot. There, it's under the light, so you can see it a little bit longer. If you, uh, if you go on YouTube and do a search on Candle Cannon, Candle Cannon, there's a sandwich company that does a promotion, and they made one of these as big as a car. And the smoke rings are just huge. And it was a promotion for their sandwich company. And they're putting out candles at 180 feet. It's unbelievable. And they aim it at a woman who's eating lunch at a, with a paper plate. Blows her paper plate all over the place. It's amazing. It's amazing. Anyway, that's my presentation, everybody. Thank you very much. If you have questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them if you want to come up.